Defenses are one of the most important aspects of any ship in Elite Dangerous, no matter their role. Today we're going to look at three unlockable modules, the Guardian Hull, Module, and Shield Reinforcements to understand their pros and cons. So sit back and let's look at how to unlock these modules so you can decide if they are worth it for you. Let's start by looking at each module to determine if they are worth the trouble of unlocking them, starting with what is in my opinion the best of the three, the Guardian Module Reinforcement. I say this is the best as it virtually has no drawbacks and is objectively better than the standard equivalent. First, let's talk briefly about what module reinforcements do. Well, they reinforce your modules. When you add a single, they will increase the overall integrity of all modules by 60%, and while they do stack, you'll get diminishing returns, as 2 will give you 84%, 3 94%, and 4 97%. As such, 2 are preferable, when possible, with 1 being important, especially on combat ships. These offer that level of reinforcement until they themselves are destroyed, and this is where the Guardian variants are better, as they offer a higher integrity than a standard module with a 5D Guardian having an integrity of 385 versus 350 for standard, a 9% improvement. The only drawback is they require power, with a 5D needing a relatively small 0.88 megawatts. As most combat ships can afford that minor power draw, I use these over standard reinforcements on all combat ships and recommend you do as well. Now let's look at the second best of the three and likely to be the most popular, the Guardian Shield Reinforcement. These come in classes 1 through 5 and, like the module reinforcements, can be added to any standard military slot. You're able to outfit as many as you have slots and power for, with these working much like the Guardian FSD booster, where their power is added to your shield strength after multipliers from your boosters are taken into account. They have no impact on resistances, increasing your base megajoules only. As they have relatively low energy draw, they can be an excellent choice on medium and large class ships, especially those with multiple optional slots. While they can be used in conjunction with shield cell banks, they are not vulnerable to the feedback cascade effect. If you're unfamiliar with the ins and outs of cell banks, see my previous guide. They do offer much less total shield reinforcement than a cell bank, but as it isn't necessary to activate them, they are much easier to use. While I do recommend these on large class ships, where you have many optional slots, I would not recommend the use of more than three or so, as you need to ensure your build is balanced between shields and hull. There are two primary negatives to Guardian Shield reinforcements, the first and minor being their weight and power requirements, with the primary concern their impact to shield regeneration time. Due to this, you would almost never want to use these, certainly not more than one or two, with a biweave shield as the entire benefit of a biweave is its quick regeneration time when compared to a standard or prismatic. As such, they are best paired with a standard A-rated shield or even better with prismatics. As a very quick example, if we look at a Federal Corvette with an unengineered Class 7 biweave and no boosters or cell banks, we have a base shield strength of 572 megajoules and a recharge time of 1 minute 33 seconds and a recovery time of 1 minute 49. Adding a single 5D Guardian Shield reinforcement brings that up by only 215 megajoules to 787, but increases our regen time by a significant 36% to 2 minutes 16 seconds and a recovery time by 29% to 2 minutes 32. The more reinforcements you add, the more your regeneration and recharge times are affected. Again, due to this, these don't pair well at all with biweaves, but can work quite nicely with standard or prismatic shields. Let's look at the last of the three, and in my opinion, the least useful, the Guardian Hull Reinforcement. Like a standard hull reinforcement, this increases your base hull integrity while also multiplying your thermal resistance by 2% and caustic by 5%, where caustic damage is done by only Thargoids and the unlockable Enzyme Missile. This is damage that once applied to your hull does slow, continual damage when inflicted by Thargoids or for a short period of time from the Enzyme Missile with Thargoid caustic damage needing to be cleaned off by repairing, a decontamination limpet, or running your heat above 160%. Back to the Guardian hull reinforcement, these offered very similar benefits to a standard hull reinforcement when engineered with Grade 1 heavy duty. However, they themselves are not engineerable. While the material necessary for Grade 1 heavy duty are rather easy, you'd also need to unlock Selene Jean or Liz Ryder and engineer each module rather than just purchase them after unlocking. However, given they are limited and you can get far, far more reinforcement at even grade 3, not to mention fully grade 5, 
these are really only viable for very casual players who don't engage in combat much. As such, I really can't say they are worth the effort to unlock given their very limited benefits. Now that we've seen the pros and cons of each reinforcement, let's look at how to unlock them. The process is essentially the same as unlocking other Guardian modules. You'll need to head to a Guardian site to collect the necessary module blueprints and other components. You'll then head to a separate Guardian site to obtain the obelisk data, then finally purchase the commodity specific to the module, which can be found using tools such as eddb.io. As I've covered this process previously, please refer to my guide for unlocking the Guardian module power plant, which is linked on screen now. With luck, the process to unlock each should take you just under 90 minutes or about three or so hours for all three. I would strongly suggest using a Diamondback Explorer for this due to its jump range and small size, easing landing at the sites, and I'd strongly suggest a point defense on its roof to mitigate the missiles launched by the Guardian Sentinels. Ensuring you have enough materials to synthesize ammo reloads for your SRV is also a good idea. Once you've obtained all the necessary materials, you'll head to a Guardian Technology Broker, which is again covered in the Power Plant Unlock Guide. As the only real downsides to these modules are their weight and power usages, and the time necessary to unlock them, I do recommend the module and shield reinforcements to anyone serious about combat. Just remember that when using the Guardian Shield reinforcements specifically, that you understand their impact on shield regeneration time, and that a shield cell bank will add significantly more overall strength. The module reinforcement is objectively better than standard, so I absolutely recommend it for all combat pilots. As for the hull and meta-alloy reinforcements, those you can almost certainly skip, as it's easy enough to unlock Selene Gene and collect the materials necessary for engineering, and the limited resistance that the meta-alloy reinforcement adds would be, in my opinion, a waste of that slot. If you haven't yet taken the time to unlock these modules and you engage in combat regularly, I suggest you do so at your earliest convenience. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius of edtutorials.com reminding you to fly dangerously and thanks for watching. If you haven't yet unlocked the other Guardian modules, specifically the Frameshift Drive Booster, that should be your next endeavor with my guide linked here. If you're new to the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and supporting me here or on Patreon.